I'm your host, Cracked Rack, and even if you don't recognize the title of the Nepropovosk Maniacs, you may definitely know them as the perpetrators of the infamous Three Guys One Hammer video. A video I can't really discuss much here without massive repercussions to my show. For the purpose of simplicity and not confusing people, we'll refer to them simply as the Maniacs for this video. The Maniacs are two individuals who in 2007 randomly decided to take the lives of 21 individuals, not including hundreds of cats, dogs, and other innocent wild animals who unfortunately crossed paths with these monsters. Calling these kids psychopaths would be an insult to psychopaths. Heck, I have more respect for the disgraced Ian Watkins than these freaks of nature. The story of the Maniacs is one of insecurity, misplaced rage, and psychopathy. There's good reason as to why the Maniacs are considered one of the most notorious and infamous cases in all of Ukraine, as their story is one that has never been seen before. There's no inferences that can really be made to what these individuals did, because there's no case to base it off of. This is a truly extraordinary case, so without further ado, this is the real story of the Nepropovosk Maniacs. The Maniacs were two 19-year-old men named Viktor Sayanko and Igor Sapronyuk, with a third conspirator, Alex Hanza, being mildly involved as well. Now, I'm not exactly sure how 100% accurate the folklore regarding the Maniacs is, however, considering it's the only information about them found anywhere, we'll just have to put some faith in it. The tale goes like this. Victor, Igor, and Alex were childhood friends who had known each other since third grade. They went to school together and were known to be very rude and socially withdrawn children, getting into trouble frequently and also not completing any schoolwork. They had very bad grades and also had their first brush with the law in fifth grade, when they were caught throwing rocks and other hard objects at oncoming trains and cars. They were very mildly punished for it, as it was just seen as normal troubled kid behaviors in the eyes of the Ukrainian law. However, if I was the parent of one of these kids, I would have seen immediate red flags in this kind of behavior and would have pushed therapy on said children, or would have just become an attentive parent. What do almost all killers have in common? Terrible, terrible parents. Anyway, these three boys as they grew older continued their lives of degeneracy, with their motive being to become more manly. They had a huge fear of being bullied for their perceived weaknesses. Said insecurities actually played a giant role in their later acts. By ninth grade, the boys became more and more daring with their behavior. They collectively had a fear of heights, so after school, they'd get together, find a water tower or abandoned balcony, and then hang themselves off of it halfway to get an adrenaline rush of some sort. They collectively decided that they all had a fear of blood and were squeamish, so they started meeting up after school and killing small stray dogs in the forest performing horrible mutilations to the said creatures as to rid themselves of their blood phobia. They took a lot of pictures of these happenings as well to document it for future admiration. However, as time went on, the excuse of trying to conquer their fears fell completely short as it became very, very clear they were just bloodthirsty psychopaths. After killing stray animals for fun in the winter snow, they'd snap photos of themselves dressed up as Hitler doing offensive gestures to the camera. These were no troubled kids. These were pure degenerates who were attracted to total darkness. A notorious incident that occurred during this crime spree against innocent animals who deserve nothing but, you know, love and treats, was when the boys were about 16. They had taken a stray white kitten, nailed it to a cross, put foam and hot glue in its mouth to suppress screams, then shot it with multiple pistols until it died. This is just one of many documented cases of cruelty against animals. There are probably hundreds of furry innocent victims that have no voice because their death wasn't documented. I know that I should probably focus on the people aspect of this case, however I personally feel like animal cruelty is among one of the worst crimes you can commit. Anyway, the boys managed to balance their life of degeneracy with that of a normal one. They all had jobs, girlfriends, and families to speak of. By age 17, the boys started to get more daring and violent with their crimes. One of the boys owned a green daewoo that they'd parade as a taxi to lure unsuspecting people into so that they could rob them and then pawn their valuables off at a shop. However, two of the boys did have another brush with the law when they were 17, as they had beaten up a teenager and stolen his bike to, as you may have guessed, pawn it off at a store. Though for some reason they were let go once again, even though at that point, they literally had decades of disturbing and horrific behavior documenting all the way back to grade school. 
This was their last brush with the law before they succumbed to full-on psychopathy. On June 25th, 2007, Igor and Victor went out on a walk together that started the horrific spree of murders we now know of today. The boys were holding a hammer that was tucked inside of a yellow bag as to make it look like they were just holding a bag of groceries so they could confuse their victims. Their first victim was a 33-year-old woman named Mrs. Ilchenko, who was just coming home from a tea party she had been at with family. She was making her way home when she crossed paths with Igor and Victor. They were the only people in the area, and Victor and Igor used this opportunity to walk behind her and swing their hammer at the woman's head as hard as they could, making her collapse instantly. I won't get into the nitty gritty for obvious reasons, but together, they completely mutilated this poor woman with various power tools. A few hours later, once the boys were done with her, they left her body in plain sight and then moved on casually to scout for their next victim. Their next victim was an older gentleman, known as Roman Tatatovich, who was sleeping peacefully on a park bench when the boys approached him and immediately smashed his head in with the hammer from earlier. They bludgeoned this poor man until he was not even recognizable as a human being anymore. The boys casually went home and acted as if nothing had happened. However, their town was on red alert. News of these attacks went viral almost instantly, and there were massive manhunts for these boys. Igor and Victor laid low for a while after these initial attacks as to not arouse suspicion. Their next attacks were on July 1st. Two more innocent individuals minding their own business were found brutally murdered in the boys' trademark fashion a few towns over. Once again, the boys laid low after these murders until July 6, when they murdered three more individuals, a military veteran, and two other similarly aged people in the area. These attacks were starting to become far more public and notable, and there was a very, very clear MO on the boys' part. They brutally attacked people from behind who were drunk, elderly, or just completely defenseless in general. They picked easy targets so they could make a quicker profit by robbing the people. Though, their attacks were only getting more and more brutal. Their latest victim at this very point in time was found with her eyes gouged out and with a severed ear. One of the victims was pregnant when they killed her and had an unborn fetus that was essentially removed from her body by the attackers. On July 7th, the boys were out for another murder spree, in a forest area where they were waiting for two 14-year-old boys they had been stalking, so that they could approach them and murder them. Once the kids got close to the boys, Eager and Victor brutally assaulted and murdered one of the boys. However, luckily, one of the boys managed to get away, which was really, really bad news for the killers and there could finally be a competent police report on who was committing these murders. Unfortunately, the boy who survived this attack went to authorities and the authorities believed that he had murdered his friend, and actually beat him. However, it became very clear that he wasn't responsible for the murders, and the authorities started taking this case far more seriously. On July 12th, Sergei Yatsenko, an elderly man with cancer, was going on his daily motorcycle ride when he managed to come into contact with the boys who were out walking around looking for more victims, hammer in hand. He drove by the boys and was struck by a hammer, which immediately incapacitated him. The boys then brutally smashed his face in with the hammer, stabbed his stomach with a screwdriver, and essentially rendered him unrecognizable as a human being. His body sat there for an astonishing four days in the summer heat before he was found. This incident was actually filmed by the killers, as the killers had an incentive to record these incidents so that they could sell them on the internet as snuff films and make a disturbingly large amount of money. However, this video got leaked online to the mainstream public and went viral almost immediately, which was horrible news for the killers, as millions of people could very clearly see their faces as they commit their attacks. The boys, knowing that their run was pretty much over, decided they'd go on a few more sprees and go out with a bang. From July 14th to July 16th, the boys murdered 13 more people, their very final attack being on July 16th. Their victims in this span were almost exclusively elderly people, children, and intoxicated men walking home from the pub late at night. By July 17th, this was a worldwide case. There were over 2,000 investigators who were involved in taking these guys down. On July 23rd, 2007, the boys were at a pawn shop trying to pawn their final victim's valuables. When a cell phone they had stolen from a victim turned on, giving GPS location to investigators almost immediately who had been tracking the phone. The boys were all arrested immediately and were instantly assumed to have been responsible for the murders. 
Their trial began in June of 2008, and they were all three found guilty and convicted. Igor and Victor were both given a life sentence somewhere? I really can't find what prison they reside at, and I don't even know if they're alive, as Ukraine doesn't report on criminals like America does, and probably wouldn't even care if these guys died. Keep in mind, we're not talking about the West here in regards to the prison system. A life in a Ukrainian prison means a cold, entirely metal room with a dirty, ripped blanket, and a bucket for you and other inmates to share and defecate in. Unfortunately, Alexander Hanza, the third suspect in the case, was only given 10 years, and was released two years ago. So yeah, that's the story of the Maniacs. It's a horrible, horrible story that I can't even make any inferences with. I have no clue what to compare this case to as it's so unique and horrifying. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, comment, and subscribe for more content. See ya.